How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday night. January 28th, 2025 is the date. 9.04 p.m. California time. Latest quake here on the Earthquake 3D globe shows a one point, uh, little 1.1 Alaska. Also a little 1.8 across Texas there in the red flag. Uh, Yellowstone seeing a little bit of earthquake activity today with a uh, 4.0 earthquake. Now the USGS reporting this as a 3.9 uh, I believe this originally came in as a 3.8, so a little bit of an upgrade uh, outside of just outside the Yellowstone Caldera region, which is pretty much uh, in this area. It is a super volcano. Uh, I believe today's earthquake is a result of strain out here against the Intermountain West regions and uh, just pressing up here against the North American Craton, which is uh, center portion of the North American plate that's relatively stable in terms of any uh, transformation of the land and deformation of the land, I should say. Uh, remember Idaho here within the last, eh, was it a day or so ago yesterday? 4.2 earthquake, a number of earthquakes out here in Idaho, and a lot of fault systems here leading up to the Yellowstone area. So I believe this is strictly uh, tectonic stress out here due to, of course, all the pressure out here across the West Coast. Um, far as that 3.9 earthquake in Yellowstone goes. 4.5 miles deep for a 3.9. Uh, far as any major swarming going on following the earthquake, let's go ahead and check out the latest seismograph stations here. See what we have. Got, uh, well, obviously the 3.9 very visible. Uh, there is a handful of earthquakes here, a, a good amount as well. Uh, so it could be start off a little swarm or it could just be you know, a typical aftershock sequence here following a, uh, you know, somewhat of a minor to moderate earthquake. And uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. Either way, there's a number of them. There's the 3.9. Quite a few other quakes in there on the seismograph station. Uh, some of those showing up at nearby seismograph stations as well. So, uh, but I don't think the USGS is reporting uh, any of those aside from the 3.9. That's, you know, that's why I always say that these smaller quakes don't get reported. And that's just a, that's just proof right there that they don't get reported. There's a lot. Uh, nothing big, nothing even close to the 3.9 magnitude that we've seen for the main quake. But uh, I firmly believe that this is just general strain and stress out here, uh, not volcanic related. Although, of course, you know, tectonic pressure could have an effect on a, a super volcano or any volcano for that matter. Uh, but this earthquake, not in relation to any... Um, you know, elevated unrest here at a super volcano. It's just a 3.9. We'll watch it, see if it turns into a type of, you know, maybe some type of earthquake swarm. But uh, for now, just a handful of earthquakes. And that looks like that 3.9, uh, let me go back here. Again, struck just outside the Yellowstone caldera. You can kind of see it. Um, roaring Mountain. Yeah, just outside the caldera region. There's numerous fault systems that run through here. Uh, many different fractures and you know it makes sense there following the Idaho earthquake yesterday to see increasing pressure out here across the region but uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on it Pacific Northwest handful of earthquakes across the uh, Mount St. Helens and Mount Rainier area nothing big going on uh, let me go over and double check the uh, seismograph stations there see what we have for the latest data uh, by the way tremor uh, 113 epicenters of tremor. It's more spread out than anything, not centered to one area. So um, that's down into the subduction zone of the Cascadia. Obviously adding strain upstream across a good area of the Cascadia. Um, Mount St. Helens. Let's go ahead and check out Seismograph Station here at the uh, summit area. See if we can get one of these to work. Uh, let's see here. There's a couple earthquakes out there in the last few hours. There's a couple of the smaller quakes. As you can see, they're very small. Very small, spiky ones. This looks like the largest of them. And that uh, was a... Uh, it shows it as a 0.3, but I, I think there's more earthquake activity out here than, than that one early this morning. They're showing this one a 0.3 three o'clock in the morning and some of the other earthquake activity is uh, uh within the last eight hours or so so we got some earthquake activity showing up but again another example of where they're not reporting uh, the smaller quakes mount rainier a couple earthquakes up there as well nothing going on across the cascadia subduction zone for now 
and a handful of earthquakes up here across Northern California. Nothing of any suspicious activity. Bay Area, pretty quiet aside from a couple smaller microquakes around the region. Southern California, see if we got anything above 2.5. Uh, looks like a 2.5 across Ridgecrest and a 2.7 here uh, one hour before. That is north here of the Garlock Fault Shear Zone. There's another uh, boundary that runs across this area in that fashion. The White Wolf Fault in the southern Sierra Nevada Fault Line that stretches up. A lot of activity stretching up and into this region recently, adding strain across the Garlock Fault Shear Zone and in general the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, we've seen uh, some stress release. Not, I can't say stress release, but stress signs just off of the plate boundary down here, the southern end of the San Andreas Fault, that bend area uh, throughout the last week. And that's obviously a little concerning. I think we may be at maximum pressurization here. And uh, I, I think it's been that way for a little while. Just who knows how much longer we're going to have to walk on eggshells out here uh, because a big one is coming. One earthquake outside of Palmdale, right on the San Andreas Fault, 1.1. Nothing big for now. But again, it's uh, it's, it's getting due. It's overdue, actually, down here. Oil fields of Texas getting hit. Um, nothing major going on out there across the eastern portion of the country for now. Clustering going on across the uh, Tonga Trench, Kermadec Trench, New Zealand area. Nothing to report. Let me double-check New Zealand. Um, I don't really see anything... Hold on. Let me bring up the time frame a little bit. Looks like this earthquake 3D globe has a habit of uh, adjusting itself to a lower time frame. I like to keep the last 24 hours on the globe. Uh, there's some of the earthquake activity in the last 24 hours. A lot of older activity. There was a number of threes out there, but no new further larger movement across the New Zealand area for now. Uh, we've noticed a gap, though, in terms of lack of seismic activity in this region, Papua New Guinea eastward along the plate boundary. So I'm sure that will fill in here soon. Uh, decent movement out across the Java Trench with a bunch of fours and even a five-pointer uh, stirring up out here in this area. Uh, 5.0, 4.6, the latest quake in this region. But uh, there's quite a few other earthquakes in that sequence of events there. Just a little clustering going on. Uh, not a whole lot there across Japan for now. 3.6, still watching the Nankai Trough. Along the Aleutian Trench, some further activity up here where things have been uh, somewhat active recently. Got uh, the latest quake of 4.2. That follows uh, some earlier movement in the uh, morning there, 4.1. It does look like we're starting to get a little migration here uh, in this fashion along the Aleutian Trench. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity out here in this region. And the, uh, <clears throat> the strain... <coughs> excuse me, tends to go up in this area as we go along the plate boundary. Uh, less strain across this region, I believe. Let me see. Yeah, about 60 mm per year, and that increases. This is just average numbers. It increases as you go west along the plate boundary and, and then along the uh, Kuro Kam Chatka. Uh, so not a whole lot of earthquake activity right here. We could see, uh, I'm guessing we may see something here soon. Even the last 30 days, pretty absent earthquake activity. So watch that region. Uh, what do we got here in Japan? 4.7, that was from uh, last night. Ethiopia rift boundary, 4.5. One earthquake being reported there. Um, I don't really see anything else showing up in there. Just kind of uh, taking a little break from the earthquake swarm that they've been having there recently. Typical movement across the Mediterranean. Really nothing big to mention out there for now. South Sandwich Trench. Well, that's actually north here of the plate boundary. That's a little odd. Let's see. Out in the South Atlantic Ocean, west of the South Georgia region. Pretty shallow, six miles deep there. Most of the activity has been uh, straining across the subduction zone here of the South Sandwich Trench in the last 30 days with a bunch of fives and fours. But uh, looks like this area may be getting a little bit of strain. I, I don't recall the last time I seen any big earthquake activity out there. Let me, let me double check. Kind of curious. We'll go 5.5 .5 and then we'll just go, yeah. I don't know, that may be too many, but we'll take a look here. 
across this area which uh, sits right about here we know the subduction zone over here can get some big earthquakes I'm kind of curious about this area as far as historical data goes uh, wow only 20 earthquakes here near the uh, Falkland Islands region that's a pretty big earthquake 7.0 back in 2013 um, there's today's event so yeah it's kind of rare out here in terms of earthquake activity it looks like the last earthquake of 5.5 and above uh, was back in 2013 along this area a little bit of time passing out here uh, 6.6 .6, 1993 yeah it looks like uh, maybe could be coming up due here for uh, well, let's see 2013 might be uh, getting close to some bigger earthquake activity out here not uh, anything in mega quake magnitudes that happens here across the subduction zone but uh, could see some earthquake activity ramping up here soon with that uh, newer quake uh, let's see Hawaii I believe that's still on a pause out there but let's just go and double check see what we have for the latest information from Kilauea volcano take a look here at the night webcam up at the summit area still quite of a uh, glowing out there luminescence lighting up the uh, crater floor the lava floor I don't see any ongoing eruption out here for now taking a little pause and of course the uh, inflation there across the area should be coming up which uh, yeah it is right here Shoop. a little bit just been a rinse and repeat cycle but it looks like with every well these look pretty steady here it's getting lower on the graph obviously we're going down a little bit but uh, I, I don't know it's still going back up so that tells me we're gonna see probably another eruption here soon within the, a couple days as the pressure builds back up underneath neath the area all right nothing major going on here across the rest of the world Um, space weather activity see what we got looking at uh, a couple active areas out here on the eastern limb of the Sun that is currently flaring it's a massive huge area sunspot that's gonna be sunspot number 39 well it's named here two different numbers three maybe 3978 3976 I thought it was just one big giant sunspot it looks like it anyway uh, but they have different names for uh, different sections out here either way it looks to be an active area uh, quite complex out here on this area and also up to the north so that's going to increase our flare threat I got about 50 percent chance for M flare 5 percent for X flare uh, on my studies of the magnetogram I may bump that up a little bit now that's turning into a, a little bit more earth directed view uh, we'll watch that again we're starting to notice a little bit of flaring popping up here in the last few hours a couple low-grade M flares and uh, as the instability continues uh, we got you know maybe a chance of some X flare activity we'll have to watch for uh, no major roars there in the forecast for now though uh, I was looking at 2024 YR4 it's an asteroid here that's gonna get awfully close here to the planet in uh, uh, 2032 it gets awfully close I'm gonna cover this a little bit more looks like it oh it didn't freeze up um, but I'm gonna cover this a little bit more in detail um, maybe tomorrow when I have a little bit more time to bring this about but it's showing a, a really close call I believe this is a three up to a 300 foot size asteroid and uh, you know there's uh, uh, right now it's the highest on the Torino scale that's the uh, scale that uh, NASA uses there for uh, asteroid impacts so that is the highest on there at a level three um, one in 83 chance that it could hit something of this magnitude would probably be comparative to the uh, tungsta event back in 1908 I believe it was uh, where it flattened a whole bunch of uh, forests out there but I'll, I'll cover this a little bit more in detail tomorrow I don't want to rush through this because I'm gonna talk a lot about this but I want to have a little bit more time 
but uh, I'm just tired. A long day. Uh, of course, starting up the spring semester here at the college in Northern California, so quite busy. But uh, we'll get that um, tomorrow. Uh, one earthquake out here. Uh, 1.6. Couple other smaller quakes. So. We'll just kind of watch things here, folks. Uh, you know, a lot going on, a lot of strain out here in the Mountain West regions, Yellowstone area. Um, again, I don't think it's anything to worry about in terms of volcanic activity. Uh, 3.9. Um, if we see multiple threes and it goes up to four, then some fives out here and the elevation starts to rise and swells, then yeah, then that's almost a certain guarantee there that Yellowstone could be getting ready to pop. But this is just general stress and strain out here. Uh, due to, you know, there's many faults built up out here. And, of course, it sits right up against the North American Craton region. You get all that strain and the deformation there on the west uh, side of the states or the western area of the uh, North American continent, all the way up in the Rockies as well, or uh, up in the Canada. All right, uh, weather outlook real quick. <coughs> Goodness. D3, still got a slight risk category. We'll check back on that a little bit later. Um Right now, well, here is this is going to be Thursday into Friday. This is when the severe weather potential is going to return across Texas, Louisiana area. Uh, and that's going to probably be a big severe weather day, maybe some tornado activity as well. We'll check back on that. But Northern California getting back in on the rain. Looks like it's aimed right at my neck of the woods here. I definitely need some rain. Uh, ground is super dry, even down below the, just down below the surface, it's dry. And that's, that's not normal for this time of year. So we've got a good uh, atmospheric river event, it looks like, aimed at California. That followed up by another one uh, a few days later. And it looks like, uh, looks like it's going to stay unsettled out here across the uh, West Coast. With uh, precipitation runs showing some promising, I don't know about drought busting, but uh, some promising uh, moisture there returning to the surface. Looks like around my neck of the woods, maybe three inches or so, much higher up in the Sierra Nevada mountains. That's uh, definitely some good news out there for sure. All right, folks, um, let's see, seismograph stations out there, a couple offline for some reason. Looks like it's the plate boundary stations. Yellowstone, China Lake, Petrolia, hopefully they come back. Most of the time they do. But uh, all right, have a good night, folks. We'll catch you guys back out here sometime in the morning for the uh, morning update. Take care.